to our glory, the children of Israel, the redemption of his people. <laughs> Shalom, shalom. Um, today's topic is going to be clean and unclean foods. Brothers, by raise a hand, who can explain clean and unclean foods? Raise your hand. Only two people? Three, four, five. Everybody's waking up now. Yes, your parathon. <coughs> can you explain clean and unclean foods? Yeah. Okay. We're going to see. We're going to go through uh, some scriptures today that's commonly used by Christianity. So whenever y'all are out dealing with so-called Christians, you'll be able to combat the nonsense that they're coming with. And there's only a select few scriptures that they'll actually attempt to use. All right. First, let's go to Romans 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things that were written before time were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Explain that, y'all. What's up? This Bible was written for our learning. Have a seat. Explain that, a shark. Stand up. Uh, it's written for our Right. Mm -hmm. Things that were written before time were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might hope. Where do we find patience and comfort? The through the scriptures, right? So we go into the Bible to understand how to deal with the things that are going on in our lives and how to live our lives, okay? Paul is telling us that we got to go back and study. We got to read the things aforetime. time, okay? So from there, give me Mark, you know, before you Mark 7, let's go into the law real quick concerning the foods we cannot eat. Amakai, where's the laws concerning the foods that we can and cannot eat? Leviticus chapter 11. Let's get a Leviticus 11. <clears throat> I want you to start at verse uh, 46 first. Leviticus 11 and 46. Let me get it. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 46. Come on. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth Read. to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. To make a difference, meaning what? So you are able to set apart the things that are unclean and the things that are clean. Read. And between the beasts that, me, that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. And between the beast that you can eat and the beast that you cannot eat. Go to Leviticus 11 and 1. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed mm -hmm. and cheweth the cud among the beasts. That shall ye eat. So here's the laws concerning what we can eat. Come on. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof as the camel. Read. Because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He has to meet those requirements. That animal has to meet those requirements of what? Chewing the cud and parting the hoof, right? Read on. He is unclean to you, unto you. And the coney... Because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Read on. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. The camel, the coney, the hare, these things we cannot eat, correct? Read on. 
And the swine. And the what? And the swine. This is something that is commonly eaten today over here in America in this Western civilization. Read. Though he divide the hoof. Though his hoof is divided. And be cloven footed. And he has he's cloven footed. Come on. Yet he cheweth not the cud. He does not chew the cud. What does it mean to chew the cud? Um Yes, your parathon. Uh, when he eats something, regurgitates, his back up, chews it, and swallows it again to a second stomach. That's what it means to chew the cud. Read on. He is unclean to you. That swine, that pig is unclean to you. Read. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Uh huh. And their carcass shall ye not touch. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and of their carcass you shall not touch. Ex explain that, Gabar. Stand up. Meaning we're not to eat them anyway. Uh, anything that per pertains to swine, we're not supposed to eat it. The carcass we're not supposed to touch. Touch meaning to take it and, and put it towards our mouth. Touch it to eat it. How do you know that? That's what you told me. Wow. <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> Romans chapter 3 real quick, please. <laughs> Romans chapter 3, and then uh, Amakai, you give me Jeremiah 17 and 5, please. Bro, that, that's what you told me. I know. <laughs> you never, Romans 3 and 1. Give me Romans 3, verse 3. <clears throat> Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. What if, for, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? So what if some don't believe this truth? What if some don't believe the say of the Lord? Is that going to change anything? No. Read. God forbid. No, that's not going to change anything. Read on. Yea, let God be true. Come on. But every man a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. We are not supposed to go off of man's words and what we hear or what we observe. We need to ask for the scriptures, okay? Like I said, if you ask the question, if you know it, you say you know it, right? What does it say in Ecclesiastes? What chapter is that? Five or four? It says, if thou, if thou hast, hast answer, answer thy neighbor. If not, Lay thy hand over thy mouth, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Amakai, stand up. Read that. Finish reading that verse. No. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in the same. It has to be as it is written so that we're able to be justified when we say something, right? Read. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. And we might overcome when we are judged. Why? Because we went according to thus saith the Lord. We didn't go according to thus saith deacon. Or thus saith elder, or thus saith the brother that we esteem to know what the Bible is saying. We actually went to the scriptures ourselves and said, oh, now I understand. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17 and four, uh, 5. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Right. Cursed be the man that trusted the man. So let's not trust in any man. Let's get it from thus saith the Lord. Now, I will be honest with you. For a long time, it was taught in Israel that of their carcass shall you not touch. That was seen as being, okay, we can't even touch the carcass of a pig. If a pig dies, we can't move it, can't do anything to it. But now we understand that that of their carcass shall you not touch is talking about touch it to eat it. From there, go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 35. Somebody also give me Leviticus 11. <clears throat> Exodus 35, I want, start at verse 21. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 35, verse 21. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom has his has spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. Read, and basically they were working on the tabernacle, making it, building it. Read, and for all his service, and for the holy garments. Read, and they came, both men and women, as many as were willing hearted, and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, Come all on. jewels of gold. Read, and every man that offered offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. And every man that whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. And goat's red, hair. Read. And red skins of ram. So is goat's hair, is that clean? Can we can we eat goat? Yeah. Yes. What about rams? Yeah. Read on. And red skins of rams and badger skins. Whoa, it says and badger's skins. Can we eat badger? No. no. 
No. Does a badger is a badger clover footed? Does it chew the cud? No. So are we able to eat it? No. But how are we able to get the skin? Well, he was speaking of what? It was talking about eating it. Go back to Leviticus eleven. That's uh, John the Baptist wore camel hair. Exactly. Leviticus eleven. Start at verse um, eight again. Leviticus chapter eleven, verse eight. Come on. Of their flesh shall you not eat, uh -huh. and their carcass shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. It says, "Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you." This is talking about all those unclean animals. You're not supposed to touch their carcasses to eat them. Okay. Where else do we read about uh, dietary laws? We always quote um, Leviticus 11. Isn't there somewhere else that we can find the dietary laws? Does anybody know? If you don't know, raise your hand. If you don't know, raise your hand. If you don't know. Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter. Deuteronomy, chapter 14. Start at verse 2. Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 2. Start at 3, sorry. Verse 3. Come on. Thou shalt not eat in any abominable thing. These are the beasts which ye shall eat. These are the beasts which you can eat. Come on. The ox. Read. The sheep. Read. And the goat. Come on. The heart. Read. And the roebuck. And the fellow deer. And the wild goat. And the pygar. And the wild ox. And the chimos. Chimios. Now check this out. So... When you get a chance to go through all of these things, we go back to Leviticus, the 11th chapter. It speaks about creeping things. It speaks about uh, things that are in the waters, okay? This is, where you find, this is where you find the dietary laws that God gave us, the guidelines he gave us to live by, okay? Now, what is the biggest, what's the biggest hurdle that we as repentant Israelites in Christ have to face when explaining the dietary laws to so-called Christians? Y'all, what's up? Paul writing. Mm, yes, something else. What's the biggest obstacle that we have to cross to where we're able to now validate as these laws being laws? <laughs> Proving that the Old Testament laws are not done away with. That Christ did not come and do away with those laws found in what they call the Old Testament. The Old Testament, unbeknownst to Christianity, is not talking about uh, Genesis to uh, Malachi. That is ignorance. Ignorance. So how would you show them that uh, the Old Testament is talking about the sacrifice? How are you going to show them that these laws are still in effect? What scripture would you go to? Gabar. Matthew 5, 17. Okay. Who's over there? I think have him come over. Oh, he's back. Never mind. All right. Get Matthew five seventeen. <clears throat> Matthew is the fifth chapter and started the seventeenth verse. Matthew chapter five verse seventeen. Now this is the kicker, though. We we realize that a lot of times they think, oh, y'all use the same scriptures regarding that. No, we have to use the scriptures that are most plain to so-called Christians because the other stuff they're not, they're not able to understand as well, which we'll touch a couple of them. But they're not, under, they're not able to understand it, so we have to use other scriptures that will be a little more clearer to them, where there's no excuses, like this one. Read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. Think not that I am become to destroy the law or the prophets. Uh, Yawasop, stand up. Read that again for him. Yawasop, you explain it. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He didn't have to do, he didn't have to came to destroy nothing that the prophets have said in the, in the word of God. And uh, he come to fill the uh, prophecy of him doing away with uh, sacrifice. Who is he correct? Anybody want, have anything they want to add on to that? Kabar. Christ is saying that he didn't destroy any of the laws or the prophecies that the prophets spoke of. 
And when he when he says he came to fulfill it, uh, fulfill is being uh, the precept is Acts three and eighteen. Go there. Acts chapter three. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. But those things which God before have showed by the mouth of all his prophets. Meaning that God showed all the things that were going to happen in the New Testament by the mouth of his prophets. The prophecies that the prophets spoke about Christ. Read. That Christ should suffer, he have not he have so fulfilled. That Christ should suffer for our sins, meaning him dying and sac being sacrificed on the cross was the fulfillment of those things. Right. Real quick, go back to Matthew 5 and 17. Watch how simple this is. Christ is letting you know blatantly. This leaves no room for those that call themselves Christians. They can't, they don't understand when he says fulfill, as the brother just explained it. He fulfilled the law of sacrifice. That is the covenant, the first covenant. Read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. Think not that I am come to destroy the law Read. or the prophets. Read on. I am not come to destroy. But to fulfill. He said, don't you even think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets, what the prophets wrote. Why is it that he said he did not, don't think he came to destroy the law? Why would Christ say that? Why would he say, Do, don't you even think I came to destroy the law, Ashar? Because uh, when he was coming, he was bringing in a new covenant. No. Why did he, why would he say that? We read earlier in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, it says the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. Goodbye. He said it for today. Exactly. Because he knew you were going to have wicked Israelites and wicked heathens that would come talking about he came and did away with God's laws. It is biblically impossible for the Messiah to come and do away with God's law. Why is that? Give me Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah the 8th <clears throat> chapter, and I want the 20th verse. I, These are the stipulations to any man who comes in the name of the Lord. Read. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. Come on. To the law and to the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. To God's laws and the testimony of the Messiah, which, guess what? All the prophets spoke about. All the prophets spoke about the coming of the Messiah. Or what was going to happen in the end times when Israel was going to be redeemed. How are they going to be redeemed? Through the Son of the Most High, the Messiah. Read. If they speak not according to this word. If they don't speak according to this word. If they don't speak according to God's laws and the Messiah. Come on. Christ. It is, be it is because there is no light in it's them. because there is no light in them. That is why. Christ could not come and change anything. Give me John chapter 5 verse 30. Christ could not come and change a single thing. You give me John 5 and 30. You give me uh, the one in uh, Malachi. You know what I want? Malachi is at 3 and 6. Read. John chapter 5 verse 30. Come on. I can of my own self do nothing. What did Jesus say? I can of my own self do nothing. Christ says I can of my own self do nothing. I can't do what it is that I want to do. Read. As I hear. As I hear. I judge. I judge. What does that mean? As he is told, he does it. Read on. <clears throat> and my judgment is just. And my judgment is just. Why is his judgment justified? Because he goes by the word of the Most High, what God said to do. As he hear, he judges. Read. Because I speak not my own will. He's not. He's not doing his own will. Read. But the will of the Father but, which hath sent me. But the will of the Father which sent Christ. Okay, that right there sh destroys your Trinity doctrine, so-called Christians. He says he's coming to do what his Father commanded him to do. Give me that in Malachi three. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. Come on. For I'm the Lord. I change not. He said what? For I'm the Lord. I change not. He says for I am the Lord and I change not. God gave us the commandments and we're going to have to keep these commandments. Okay. All right. Go back to uh, Matthew the fifth chapter. Matter of fact, real quick, because I made a statement earlier about uh, the covenant being sacrificed. Psalms 50 and 5. Real quick. Psalms chapter 50 verse 5. It is completely unbeknownst to Christianity the stupidity that they actually believe in. They think that the Old Testament begins in Genesis 
and is all the way through Malachi. Why? Because they open their Bible up, and what is it they see? They see it in the beginning. It says Old Testament, right? Here we go. They see this. See, brother, this is the Old Testament. Then they get to Matthews, and they say, all right, now we're crossing into the New Testament, right? Well, in fact, these pages were never in the Bible. The Bible was not divided by Old Testament, New Testament. What does testament mean, by the way? Gabar, covenant. Covenant. Old covenant, new covenant, right? Give me that. Psalms chapter 50. Psalms chapter 50, verse 5. Go on. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Wait a minute. It says, gather my saints together, those that did what? <clears throat> those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Who made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice? Gabar, you only want to know? Who made a covenant with the Lord by way of, by sacrifice? Amicon. Israelites. Israel. Israel was the ones that made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice, right? How do we know that? I need a scripture. Gabar. Deuteronomy 5, verse 1 and 2. Read. I need one in the New Testament, too. Uh, Hebrews chapter 8. That's a good one, but I want it, I want it, I want one that's very um, cut and dry. In Romans, I mean, I pretty much already gave it to you. Romans, the ninth chapter, start at verse one. Yeah. Got it? <clears throat> Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Come on. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. That I have great heaviness and, con and uh, contentual sorrow in my heart. For I will wish that, that myself were accursed from Christ from my brother. Mm. My kinsmen according to the flesh. Really? Who are Israelites. To whom pertained the adoption and the glory. And the covenants and the giving of the law in the service of God okay. and the promises. Wait a minute. Go back. I want you to start back. What's that verse four that you're in? Yes. Mm -hmm. Read verse four again. Verse four. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? To whom pertain the adoption. Israelites are able to be what? Adopted back in. Read. And the glory. And the glory. Meaning what? All the glory you read from Genesis to Revelations is pertaining to the children of Israel. Come on. And the covenant. And the what? And the covenant. Is that is that singular or plural? <coughs> plural. And the covenants. The covenants. Now, what is the covenants? What, what covenants was given? The Old Testament and New Testament. Let's say somebody gets simple. They say, no, 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 you're mixing it up. Testament, covenant, totally different. Give me Hebrews 9. Watch this. Your brothers need to mark this down the next time a so-called Christian comes at you with this foolishness. They don't understand the word of God. Hebrews 9, I want you to start at verse 16. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16. Come on. For where a testament is, where a testament is, there must also of necessity by the death of the testator. There must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Who was the testator? Exactly. He died, right? He was the testator. It was a necessity that Christ had to come and die for the nation of Israel. Read. For a testament is a force after men are dead. For a testament is a force. Uh, uh, it says, for a testament is a force after men are dead. That's a, It's like a, an agreement. Like a will. Y'all ever heard of a will? Okay, what happens after a person leaves this earth? What does that will now do? It goes into effect. It goes into effect as the New Testament did. Read. <clears throat> For a testament's force of men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. It has no strength at all while the testator liveth. That's why Christ had to come and give his life. He was the testator. He was the one that had to die for the nation of Israel. For what? For this new covenant or testament to begin. Come on. Verse 18. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Let's read that again. Verse 18, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Right. The, test, the first testament, guess what it was dedicated with? What did you use? 
Animal sacrifice. Animal sacrifice. That was the first testament. Read on. Verse 19. For when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law. Come on. He took the blood of cows and of goats. Read. With water and scarlet wool. Read. And hyssop. And sprinkled both the book and all the people. And sprinkled both the book and all the people with what? The blood of goats. With the new, with the old testament that God gave. Right? Read on. Verse 20. Saying, this is the blood of the testament. This is what? This is the blood of the testament. What did Moses say? This is the blood of the testament. This is the blood of the testament, read. Which God hath enjoined unto you. Which God hath enjoined unto you. Who did he enjoin this testament to? The children of Israel. He says, gather all, uh, gather my saints together, all that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Okay, so here we go. This just showed us that the Old Testament was the Old Covenant which was blood, which Christ came and fulfilled, giving us the new testament or covenant, which is what? Whose phone, whose phone is that? Take that from her. Okay, so once again, here comes uh, Christ with the new covenant, the new testament, which is through his blood. Okay, now watch. Seeing that he fulfilled the uh, old covenant, give me Matthew's 5 again. Seeing he fulfilled the old covenant, which was what, Yahweh Which was what? Amakai? The Old Testament was the law of sacrifice. Right, which was the law of sacrificing. He came and fulfilled that. Now this is going to make sense because Christians in all their stupidity state he came and fulfilled those all those laws, right? All of those laws. Not understanding, Christ didn't come and fulfill adultery. Christ didn't come and fulfill uh, murder. Christ didn't come and fulfill the law of fringes. Christ didn't come and fulfill the uh, dietary laws. Christ didn't come and fulfill the law uh, pertaining to homosexuality, fornication, and these things. So what are they really saying? Read that. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Of the prophets. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. Read. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Come on. One jot of one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Until all is fulfilled. Has all been fulfilled yet? No. So you can't even move your mouth to try to say that, oh, uh, we don't got to keep those laws anymore. He said, till heaven and earth pass. Has heaven and earth passed yet? No. So what we're going to do is we're going to touch on these, these this dietary law, and we're also going to touch on the scriptures that they use to try to say that we don't have to keep these laws, and Paul said we don't got to do it. Because that's what they run to. Just like the brother said earlier, Paul's writings is what we deal with the most, and it's due to them not understanding the Bible, okay? First one I want to go to is not Paul's writings. You might get a so-called Christian that may want to use this. Give me Mark chapter 7. Mind you, this isn't this class wasn't over uh, Old Testament and New Testament because there is a lot more scriptures that we can go over proving what the Old Testament and New Testament were. If 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 a so-called Christian did believe that, would the New Testament start in Matthews? Why wouldn't the New Testament start in the book of Matthews? Exactly. Exactly. So how how would you why would you start the New Testament in before Matthews chapter one? You would have to start it way after, when after Christ gave his life. If you want to start it from whenever the New, uh, the New Testament began. Right, you'd have, this, you'd have to divide up a whole bunch of books. But anyhow, read this. Uh, give me Mark chapter 7. Uh, no, start at verse... I want to say started. <coughs> no, but I'm wondering if we should start a little higher. Just start at 14. We can cover it. If there's any questions, we can cover it in another video sometime. Mark chapter 7, verse 14. Come on. And when he had called unto all the people unto him, he said unto them, 
Hearken unto the hearken unto me, every one of you, Read. and understand. He says, "Listen to me, everybody, and understand this." Go on. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. That can defile him. Christians say, "See, if you eat anything, if anything goes into you, it ain't gonna defile you or make you unclean." Read. But the things which come out of him. Those are they that defile the man. Now it says it's that which comes out of him. That's what defiles him. So they say, see, it's not what goes in you, but what comes out of you. Question for you. What is the subject matter? What is Christ speaking about? How do you know? Let's go to the beginning of the chapter. See, Christians will try to tell you, see, what y'all doing? Y'all, y'all are um Y'all are basically scripture isolating. Y'all are isolating scriptures. But so-called Christianity is the guru of doing that. That's all that they do. They have no contextual understanding. It's all just, uh, this, we're going to read this verse, uh, John 3, 16. Then they close the book. Ask a Christian what John chapter 3, verse 14 means. Anyways, go. Uh, Mark 7, 1. Mark chapter 7, verse 1. Come on. Then came together unto him the Pharisees. And certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem, and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with the fowl, mm. that is to say, which unwashing hands they found fault. Wait a minute, it says they saw some of the dis disciples eat bread with defiled, and that is to say that they didn't wash their hands. Okay, read on for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands off, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Holding the tradition. Tradition, 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 not law. Tradition, read. Of the elders. Of the elders. This was something that they made up. They made these things up on before you eat, you gotta you gotta wash your hands a certain way. Okay? Read on. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. Except they wash their hands, they didn't eat not, they would not eat. Read. And many other things there be. Which they have received to hold. These things that they do, that they, they hold to themselves, that they, they basically kept. Read. As the washing of the cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. They had a certain ritual or tradition that they would go through when eating these different things. Read. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders? Mm. But eat bread with unwashing hands. Why aren't your disciples following the traditions of the elders? Why aren't they doing that? Watch what Christ says. Read. Verse 6. Wait, so, so thus far, I got a question. Are we talking about unclean food yet? No. We're talking about people eating with unwashing hands. Exactly. Read on. Mark chapter 7, verse 6. Read. He answered and said unto them, Well, have the Esaias prophesied of you, hypocrites, mm. as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips. That's our people today. Our people, they honor God with their lips. They mouth. Oh, I love the Lord. Love the Lord. Yada, yada, yada. Read. But their hearts is far from me. But what? But their hearts is far from their me. Their hearts are far from the Most High God. Come on. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines to commandments of men. Mm, wait a minute. Read that again. How be it in vain do they worship me? They worship, they worship the Most High in vain. Meaning what? All that stuff they're doing is for nothing. Same thing with you so-called Christians. All that pouncing and jumping and hollering and screaming, flipping and doing cartwheels in church is vain. It's for nothing. They don't keep the commandments of God. They don't do what the Lord said to do. All that Sunday worship and singing and, and, and praising don't mean nothing to the Most High. You are worshiping him in vain. Why? Because you put, you put aside the commandments of God to follow traditions of men. Read that again. Verse 7, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. They teach the commandments of men for doctrine. But for doctrine, you're supposed to teach what? The commandments of God. Read on. Verse 8, for laying aside the commandment of God. They lay aside God's commandments, which you read in the Old Testament. Read. Ye hold the traditions of men. And they hold the traditions of men. What's another example that so-called Christians do? This is speaking about what the Pharisees was doing back then. But so-called Christians is doing the same thing today. What's the tradition? Christmas. Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays. What's that um, uh, the thing they do before Easter, the Friday? What is it called? Uh, fish, fish Fry Friday or something like that. Friday. Black? Uh, uh, no, the Fish Fry. Good Friday. Good Friday. Yeah. 
Good Friday. Show me that in the Bible. Anybody got a scripture for that? They, they put aside God's days, high holy days, like the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Dedication. These things you read in the New Testament. They put aside those days and they say, no, Lord, we don't need to keep the Passover. We're going to keep uh, Easter. Read that again. Verse 8. Read. For laying aside the commandments of God. Ye hold the traditions of men Come on. as the washing of pots and cups Read. and many other such like things ye do. You do other things that ain't got nothing to do with the Lord, but you think you holy. You think you, you serve in the most high. That's Christianity in a whole, just like these Pharisees was doing back then. Read on. Verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. That's what people are doing today. They reject the commandment of God like not you're not supposed to eat swine, shrimp, crab, lobster. They reject those commandments to keep their own traditions. I grew up eating pork. We've been eating pork. I'm 60 years old. I got experience. I know it's okay. Yada, yada, yada. You done put aside God's commandments to do what you want to do. High blood pressure. Right. Got high blood pressure, gout, <laughs> everything else underneath the sun because you don't want to follow God's dietary laws. Now, you can catch those things eating uh, according to the dietary laws. Not if you're doing it in moderation. Not if you're eating like the Lord said to eat. We ain't got to worry about that. That's a commandment as well. Read on. Verse 10. Read. For Moses said, honor thy father and thy mother. The Moses said, do what? Honor thy father and thy mother. Read. This is what Moses commanded to do. To honor your father and mother. Read. And whoso curses father or mother. Read. Let him die the death. That's what, the Mo what Moses said. The Most High told Moses to give these laws. Read. But ye say, if a man shall say to this father or mother. So here comes Christianity with their loophole, with their excuse, with their way out. Just like they do everything else. Like with poor. Oh, well, Paul said everything is uh, clean and nothing to be refused. When that's not what it says, and you, you, you once again, you're, you have a misunderstanding. But it says, but ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corbin. Come on. That is to say, a gift meaning, by, what? Meaning the, the child is a gift, read. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. So basically now they say, okay, now you can let the child go. Instead of putting him to death, you can let him go. Read. Verse 12. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father of his mother. He ain't got to do what his father or mother say. He free now, right? Read. Making the word of God of none effect mm. through your tradition. They made the word of God without effect through tradition. Their traditions override the words of God. That is Christianity. I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Pentecostal, Mormon, Seventh-day Adventist. Who else? Did I miss anybody? Jehovah Methodist. Witnesses. You said Methodist? I made yeah. Catholic, Catholic y'all don't care if you're Episcopalian, non-denominational, which is a denomination which makes no sense whatsoever. But anyway, <laughs> read on. Which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Making the word of God none effect through your tra uh, tradition, which ye have delivered, which you made, which you brought, and many such like things uh, do ye. Read on. Verse 14. And when he had called all the people unto him. So now, here he's calling all the people. He just got on to them about their hypocrisy. Now he's calling all the people to come. Come here, listen to this. Read. He said unto them, Read. Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. He says what? Listen. Understand this. Come on. Verse 15. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. Why did he say that? Um, who, matter of fact, let me ask who knows before I pick on somebody. He says, there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. What is that talking about? Obadiah. It's talking about at the top of the uh, scripture. It's talking about unwashed hands. It's talking about that that's just a tradition. So eating bread with unwashed hands cannot defile That ain't going to defile you, brothers. If you eat with something, an unwashed, uh, uh, unwashed pot or pans or the case is, or your hands ain't clean, that's not going to defile you because it's dirty. That's like saying, since I drank out of this dirty cup, now I'm dirty. No, that's not what it's talking about. Christ says, there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. Read. But the things which come out of him. But the things which come out of him, meaning now what? His works, his actions, sin. Read. Those are they that defile the man. He's letting them know. Listen, uh, people. 
Y'all talking about the, these traditions when you need to be talking about the commandments. That's what's going to defile you is sin, though your workings, the things that you do. Read. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And Christians can't hear. They cannot hear this Bible. Why? Because they have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. This Bible is kryptonite. But they're going to try to look for excuses to say, see, this means I can eat what I want. Then they'll claim that you're taking it out of context. But when we read it line upon line, everything falls into place. This had absolutely nothing to do with unclean hands. Now, question for you. Ask a Christian this. At what point in time in their doctrine were the laws done away with? What would they tell you? They'll say when Christ died. They said they'll say the veil was rent, the old covenant was separated, and now we're into the new covenant with Christ's death. And they're absolutely right. When Christ did die, we did go from the old covenant, which is sacrificing, into the new covenant, right? Why would Jesus Christ be telling these people right here that they can eat whatever it is that they want? He's alive. Would that not be sin? That is this is idiotic. But when you know this word, you can't be fooled with the, with simple doctrines of men and traditions. When you know the context, when you actually know what it's saying, the Lord has given you these ears to hear, everything is going to make sense. So scratch Mark 7 from, from your um, so-called Christians from your supposed to-do list where you can eat this pork. Go ahead and mark that off because Mark 7 isn't saying that. Next one, give me Timothy's, 1 Timothy's. First Timothy's chapter four. And you know what shocks them is that we go to the scriptures before they do. We know what they're going to say before they say it. Why? Because Christianity is a dumb founded belief. And I say that loosely because it's sad that when we say Christianity, we're not talking about the true Christians. We're not talking about those that truly believe in Christ because we're the true Christians. We're the ones that truly follow Christ. Right. 1 Timothy 4, I want you to jump to the verse where, uh, verse 4, read verse 4. This is the one that they, they isolate. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. Come on. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. Come on. If it be received with thanksgiving. See, brother, every creature of God is good and nothing's to be refused. Meaning you can eat whatever you want, right? Every creature of God, right? Right? Question for you. Why are people dying, especially the people over overseas, from eating creatures of God that you ain't supposed to eat? Poisonous foods. Why is that? If nothing is to be refused, why is it that people are dying from certain foods? They eat certain snakes. What happens? Death. There's certain fish that you eat. Death. Why is that that everything was to be, uh, nothing was to be refused and everything's supposed to be received with thanksgiving? What is this talking about, Paulo? They think that the unclean foods isn't hurting them directly, mm. but they're not realizing that over time it does hurt your hurt your well being. Why is that? Why is that? I need a scripture. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter thirty-eight. Yeah. Yeah, Ecclesiastes 38, verse 15. Ecclesiasticus chapter 38, verse 15. Come on. He that sinned before his maker. That man that breaks God's laws and don't do what he said to do. Here's an example. Uh, being a whoremonger, being adulterer, fornicator, uh, eating unclean foods, things that God told you not to eat, committing murder. It says, he that sinned before his maker, read... Fall into the hand of the physician. Let him fall into the hand of the what? Physician. Doctor. Now you wondering why you got problems. You got issues. Why? Because you're not observing God's commandments. Go back. First Timothy 4. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 4. Read. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. Mm -hmm. If it be received with thanksgiving. Read. Hold on. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. So here's the scripture that's isolated. What you got? That good. The word good, anybody can consider anything good if you're going in your own mind. So that's why. Go to China. They got aborted babies in soup. And they think that's good. Is that okay? Is everything, every creature of God, are we not all God's creations? 
Oh, is everything okay? It's a six. Right. <laughs> they got everything over there. They got it. You can whatever it is that you can imagine that someone will put on a plate, they gonna put it on a plate. Go to Africa. They stirring up blood soup. They drain blood out of cows, put it in a pot, they warm it up, and that's a meal to them. They also cooking live frogs too. Come on, man. As as foe or something like that. They boil them, throw them in their live, and they actually eat. Jake them. eat frog legs. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look at that word good, it's it's in the scriptures Romans seven and twelve. Yeah. It tells you that the law is good. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything that's good in God's eyes. But watch this, watch this, watch this. We're gonna touch on that. First thing we got to do is let's go back in the verse. Let's go back in the actual chapter, okay? Because once again, scripture isolation is a very deadly thing. Why? Because what you think it's saying, God has given you to understand this. All you're doing is going in and, and misreading a verse. Start at verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, expressly that in the latter times... Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to uh, seducing spirits and Come doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils. What would be a doctrine of, of a devil? Eating pork. Eating pork. Anything that goes against the law. Exactly. What is a devil? A deceiver. And a deceiver is trying to get you to go against what God wants you to do. Right? Read on. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. What do Christians do? Speaking lies and hypocrisy. They will tell you that those Old Testament laws in their mind, what the Old Testament is, are done away with, but they will go to church and pay tithes. They will tell you that you cannot um, get a, a, a tattoo. Where is tattoos found? Do you read about it in the New Testament? What about, uh, what's another law that they run to, huh? Tithes. No, no, but we just said, we already said tithes. Right. Witchcraft. What's another one? Oh, homosexuality. Yeah. They'll say that it's wrong. Well, how do you know that it's wrong? Where was the beginnings? Where did the Lord originally say it? But anyways, speaking lies and hypocrisy, reading. Having their conscience seared with their hot iron. And that's what the majority of our people who have been over here in this land have had their, their, their conscience, their mind seared. Meaning they, they, their way of thinking is basically set in stone. They can't, they don't see anything else. Why? Because it's not comfortable for their lives. People have a problem adjusting to what God said to do. And their mind will fight against it. And then they'll justify themselves in whatever sin it is that they're in. They'll make themselves right in their own mind. Just to try to clear their conscience. That's why they run to scriptures like this. Read. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain. From me. So what was one of some of the things that they were doing? They were forbidding to marry. What does forbidding to marry mean? Give me an example of that. Forbidding to marry. Mm -hmm. Right. Someone commanding and saying that you can't get married. Like here's an example. Can Pope have a wife? No. Why? They say according to God, the Pope can't be married. That is a tradition, a doctrine of devils. They create laws to say that you can't do this, you can't do that, or you can and you can't. It says forbidding to marry, read. And commanding to abstain from meat. And they also command to abstain from meats. What is the meats they were commanding to abstain from? Here's the kicker. Do, 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 do. If you don't know, raise your hand. That there were. Remember, you. Watch this. Think Paul. Make her leave. Think about Paul in the time frame he's in. Okay? There were people uh, basically saying you cannot marry. Like you had people who were forced eunuchs. Y'all know what a eunuch is? Yeah, Right. They were basically made it to where you could not marry. And they had people who were commanding others to abstain from meats. What was the meats they were commanded to abstain from? Uh, the camels. Uh, What'd you say? Uh, the meat that you sacrificed with. The, who sacrificed with? The, uh, they was giving extra meat. When they were getting uh, sacrificed, you yeah. could just eat the... Nope, 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 nope. First Corinthians 14. I'm sorry, First Corinthians 10. My bad. 
Let's go come back here. First Corinthians chapter 10. Start at verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Stop. What is idolatry, Ashar? Uh, idol worship. Okay, worship of other gods, right? Y'all yeah. are going to realize Paul is redundant. Who wrote Timothy? Who wrote the Corinthians? Who wrote to the Ephesians? Who wrote to the Galatians? Who wrote to the Romans? Who wrote to the Thessalonians? Okay, you're going to notice Paul says a lot of things over and over because these Greek uh, Israelites that grew up doing all these things that the Greeks did suffered from the same things, okay? So what we're reading about right here in, in 1 Timothy 4, we're about to read the same thing that was going on in Corinth. Read that again. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. Read. Wherefore, my, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Meaning what? Don't, don't get into idol worship. Flee from that. That stuff that y'all came out of, flee from that. Read. Verse 15. Now speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. Come on. The cup of blessing which we bless is, is it not the communion of blood of Christ? Mm -hmm. The bread which we break is not the communion of the body of Christ. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Read. Verse 17. For we being many are one bread. And one body, for we all are partakers of their of that one bread. Jump to verse nineteen. I want to get to the point. Verse nineteen. What say I then? What say I then? Read that the idol is anything. That the idol is anything. He says, "What do I say then? That the idol is anything." Read or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. Or that which is offered, it which is offered to sacrifice is that anything? Does it mean anything? Is the idol real? No. 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 Is that food that they uh, they offer to that idol, does it automatically become bad? No. no. Why is that? Because they're not sacrificing or sacrificing it to nothing. It's, they're sac it, it ain't, it's, it's basically vain what they're doing. Just because this person takes this beef and they sacrifice it, and they say, this is to the god of, uh, give me a god, uh, whoever, Zeus. Zeus. I sacrifice this to Zeus. What does that mean to me? Who I'm an Israelite and I worship the one true God, and He sells me that meat. Here you go. Here's some um, here's some beef. I'm gonna take that meat home and I'm gonna eat that meat. And all that bougie stuff you just got through doing don't mean nothing to me because it was all lies what you're doing. That stuff is not real. That's like somebody before. Let's say a sister believes in the Harlem Shake God. I'm just making something up. Run with me. And before she gives you her plate, she gives you her plate. She does a little shake. She just blessed that food to her God, the Harlem Shake God. Did that mean anything to you? No, because it was nothing. That's what Paul's letting them know. But Paul is giving the, them an insight on something. Read verse 20. But I say that the things with the Gentiles sacrifice. The things that the Gentiles sacrifice. They sacrifice to devils. To devils. And not to God. And not to the Most High. Read on. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Don't fellowship with devils, he's saying. He's writing to the Corinthians. He says, listen, that stuff that they're doing, they're they sacrificing that to God, uh, the mother gods, them devils. They ain't sacrificing that to the Most High. They're not, they're not giving honor to the Most High with what they're doing. He says, listen, don't fellowship with them. Lead them alone. Read on. Verse 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord. In the cup of devil. You had Greeks, like even today, you have brothers and sisters that come into this truth and they got one foot in and they got one foot out. They come in, they still want to be Israelite. They want to keep high holy days, but then they want to do birthdays and Christmas and Easter and things like that. They got one foot in the truth, one foot in the world. Same thing happened with the Corinthians. They had one foot in the truth, one foot in them Greek gods and, and idolatry. They were still sacrificing and doing those things that they were doing. Y'all realize that to them, that, that stuff was fun. They weren't just sacrificing. They was having group orgies and all the other types of stuff. It was hard for them to come out of that. Read on. <clears throat> Verse 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Come on. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Read. Are we stronger than he? Are we stronger than he? No. Y'all playing games, he's saying. Are we stronger than the most high? Most high can put you to death. You playing games with the Lord, with the Most High? You trying to you trying to provoke Him? 
Read. All things are lawful for me. Wait, read that again. All things are lawful for me. He says, listen, all things are lawful for me. He can do what? He can eat that meat. That idol is nothing. <clears throat> that stuff that they're talking about, it's nothing. It's lawful for him to do. Read. But all things are not expedient. But it may not be expedient. It may not be the right thing to do at that time. Why is that? Let me say, I'm going to say it after we read this. Read. All things are lawful for me. Mm -hmm. but all things edify not. That's what he's saying. He says, listen, it may be okay for me to do it, but it may not be right for me to do it right then and there. Meaning what? It may not edify someone. It may hurt somebody. If someone sees me, like at work, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Sister, they, uh, they asked me if I wanted some of these little cheese puff thingies, right? And... This one dude is always questioning me about what it is I believe in and how I tell him I don't deal with Halloween. I don't do Christmas, Easter, all that stuff. I say it's all pagan. I don't touch that stuff. So this one, this once, um, this lady offers me some little cheese puff things and they're a little Halloween bag, right? And she's sitting there. She asks me if I want some. She knows the same thing that I know, that I don't mess with that. And then the dude that's in there was asking me about the stuff he's in there and he sees her offer me this. And she says, you want some of this? And I was, I was like, I'll take some cheese puffs in my mind. But I'm like, no, I ain't going to take these cheese puffs in front of this dude. Because all of a sudden, he going to think, I thought you, well, what's oh, up with the, in the right, isn't that like, can't you touch it? Isn't that like bad? So to basically evade that that conflict or that thought, I said, no, nah, let me let me pass on these cheese puffs. Okay? Same thing went back then. Whenever they were there, and let's say there was somebody there with you, and you went to a market, and that market, the food was sacrificed to whatever mm -hmm. God but it was there. They would sacrifice the food and they would put it. It wasn't like they were sacrificing it and burning it away. They would basically do like, y'all know like kosher salt and all these kosher foods. Y'all know somebody's praying over that, right? Yes. Someone's praying over that. That's what it means to be kosher or halal. When you see things that, that they're basically, they, they pray over it before they put it out. Oh, wow. This ain't nothing changed. This is the same thing that they do. So they pray over it. They send it out. And then if you were to buy something like that in front of a brother, he may get confused, like, wait, I thought we weren't supposed to be dealing with stuff like this. Right. But he's not knowing he's weak in the mind. He's he's still young. He can't really, he can't differentiate between what's right and what's wrong. That might cause him to go back into doing what he was doing in the first place, which was sacrificing unto these false gods. But read on. Verse 24. Let no man seek his own. Read. But every man another's help. help. Don't seek well, your own. Don't just think about yourself. Think about other others whenever you do the things that you do. Read on. Verse 25. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles. Whatever's sold in the shambles, the shambles like in the marketplaces, whatever they got hanging up, the food. Read. That eat. Eat. Read on. Asking no questions for conscience sake. Don't ask any questions for conscience sake. Think about it. If you go around and you say, hey, um, is this was this sacrifice to a God? And then they say, yeah. Now you're going to feel bad about buying that food. You're going to feel bad about it. But you said, listen, whatever sold in the shambles, go and buy it. Then don't ask what, what, what happened or what went down. Just buy it. As long as it's clean. He wasn't talking about sin. Right. This is talking about food sacrifice to idols. Read. Verse 26. For the earth is the Lord's. Mm, the and earth is whose? The Lord. The earth is the Lord's. God created. The, the Most High is not schizo. I don't know why people think that the Most High has multiple personalities or something. The earth is the Lord's. He created everything, right? Yeah. So guess what? That daggone piece of beef. That they offered to Zeus or Nefertiti or whatever God, that don't mean nothing. That's God's. The Most High owns that. That stuff that y'all doing is vain. Read on. And the fullness thereof. And everything in it is his. Come on. If any of them that believe not bid you to, to a feast. So let's say there's somebody that don't believe and they ask you to come to a feast. Come on. And ye be disposed to go. And you be disposed to go. You find it uh you find it okay to go. Like, you know what? Let me go to this feast. Let me go eat over here. Read on. Whatsoever is set before you, read. eat. Whatever they sit in front of you, eat it. Now, is that talking about eat unclean foods? No. no. He says they put a plate of food in front of you, eat the food. Right. Read on. Pray over it, Ask you. Asking no questions for conscience sake. Don't ask any questions for conscience sake if the food was sacrificed to idols. That ain't taught. We still in the same subject matter. If the food, if the, don't go there and say, wait, hold on. Did y'all sacrifice this food to, uh, to Zeus? Did y'all sacrifice this? He says, listen, don't ask any questions. Read. Verse 28. Come but on. If any man say unto you, this is offered in, sac in sacrifice unto idols. Is it talking about, have we, has the subject changed to unclean food yet? No. no. 
It says, if somebody, read that again, but if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols. Read. Eat not for the for his sake. Eat not for whose sake? For his sake. For whose sake? For his sake. Don't eat it for his sake. If he comes to you and say, listen, this was sacrifice unto uh what you call it. You say, Oh no, I can't do that. Sorry, I don't, I don't, I can't eat that. And you're doing it for whose sake? His sake. His sake. Showing him now we don't partake, we're not sacrificing it to other gods. Come on. That showed it and for conscience sake. Come on. For the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. And the fullness thereof. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 4 now. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Start at verse 3. Verse 3. Come on. Forbidding to marry. That when some of these people had the doctrines of devils, they were forbidding people to get married, forced eunuchs, things of that nature. Come on. And commanding to abstain from meat. They were saying, you can't eat that food that's sacrificed to idols. Don't touch it. You had people that said, screw it. I'm going vegan. <laughs> they said, I'm not, I don't care. I'm, I'm not going to eat anything. I'm not going to eat any meats. You had people that were commanding to abstain from meats. It ain't talking about abstaining from unclean foods. I mean, I'm sorry, foods that God said that you can now eat or whatever the case was. No, it ain't talking about that. It's talking about foods that were sacrificed unto idols. They were telling people you cannot eat that food that was sacrificed to these other gods. Read on. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving. How did God create it to be received with thanksgiving? How? He's saying some people are abstaining you. They're, they're commanding you to abstain from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving. What did God create to be received with thanksgiving? Clean. Was it swine? No. Was it shrimp? No. Was it crab? No. no. Was it aborted baby feces or whatever they eating over there? No. no. It was the clean foods, the dietary laws. Read that again. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving. God created those foods to be received with thanksgiving. Come on. Of them which believe and know the truth. Which them that what? Them that were that which believe, believe and know the truth. And know the truth. Brothers, what is the truth? The law. Prove it. <laughs> which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. This is man, listen, reading is fundamental. Read that, the bar. Psalms chapter 119 verse 142. Come on. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. What is the Lord's righteousness, Paulo? The law. How do you know? <laughs> it said the righteousness is the everlasting righteousness. I need a precept. Uh, Y'all stop. You want to cartoon something? No. Ashar. Yeah. Get that. You got it? Yeah. Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Come on. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. It shall be our righteousness if we shall what? Observe to do all these commandments. Do God's commandments. That's what righteousness means. So it says, for thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, meaning what? Keeping God's commandments, that's going to be the righteousness that is set in stone from, uh, from forever. His righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, keeping God's commandments. Read. And thy law is and thy the law truth. is what? Is the truth. Is the truth. Go back. First Timothy chapter 4. Read verse uh, 3 again. <clears throat> First Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. Forbidding to marry. And commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. They that believe, they know the truth. What? They know the laws of God. And I know that God created that animal right there for me to eat. And I don't care what you do over it. I don't care what dance you do, what hokey poke you do. That animal is clean and I can eat that animal. Read on. Verse 4, Read. for every creature of God is good. For every creature of the Most High is good. Meaning what? Those foods that God said we can eat, we can eat. Come on. And nothing to be refused. And nothing to be refused. You cannot tell me because he sacrificed this animal to whatever fake, unreal God there is. And now that animal is unclean now. We can't eat it. <laughs> Read. If it be received with thanksgiving. If it be received with thanksgiving. We thank the Father for everything that we have. Because we there's times that we went without and God made it that way. We received with thanksgiving because the most high gave us what it is that we have. Come on. <clears throat> Verse 5. Read. For it is sanctified. What by, is sanctified? 
cleanse. Cleanse. What is, I'm sorry, what is sanctified? Not what's the definition. Of it. What is sanctified? The food, the, the meat that he gave. Yeah. It's sanctified, read. By the word. By of, what? By the word. By the what? By the word. No, by uh, Pastor uh, Porkchop. By the word. No, by Sister Stir Fry. By the word. By the word of God, read. And prayer. And prayer. That's what we do. Just like now, when we get our food, do we not pray before we eat? Yes. Why are we praying before we eat? We thank in the most high. We're receiving it with thanksgiving. We ask that this food nourish our bodies. But we ain't eating the things that he said don't eat. We're not eating the things that God said this is an abomination. That makes absolutely no sense. So here we are at 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Scratch that off of the so-called Christians um, to eat pork list because you can't use it. From there, give me Colossians 2. Colossians, the second chapter. Colossians chapter 2, start at verse 16. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in in meat or in drink. Uh-oh. Read that again. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. I can see Pastor Porchup right now. See, brother, you cannot judge me in meat or drink. Read on. Or in respect of any holy day. Or respect of an holy day. See, you can't tell me that I got to keep the Sabbath day holy. Read. Or of the new moon. Or of the new moon. I don't have to observe the new moons. Read on. Or of the Sabbath days. Or of the Sabbath days. Read on. Which are a shadow of things to Wait, come. stop, because they don't ever go that far. <laughs> they stop right here. Let no man judge you in meter and drink. Meaning what? In the world, they'll say, don't let nobody judge you because you are eating pork. You're eating shrimp. You're eating crab and things of that nature, right? Watch this. Let's start up a little higher. Um, I'm not going to go too far up because I got a whole lot more I need to cover. But start at verse 14, please. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance, ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Stop. Who can explain this scripture? Read it again. Maybe the brothers didn't catch it. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. Study to show thyself approved, brothers. If y'all in the streets and somebody comes and gives you the scripture, what you going to say? Is, who, who, who knows? Stand up, Paul, uh, uh, Gabar. This is uh, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances, meaning Christ came to do away with the law of sacrifice. Which was against us because we started to sacrifice, just to sacrifice. We go out and sin and be like, "Oh, we need two turtle doves." So now, we're I'm gonna go do that, and then I'm still do the sin, and we continue to do sin instead of becoming perfect. And he nailed it to the cross with the meaning he got rid of it. When he he himself was sacrificed, he introduced that what we call the new covenant, the New Testament. Who agrees with Gabar? Paulo. Who doesn't agree with uh, Gabar? Who doesn't know what this is talking about? Okay. But y'all stop. What are your feelings? And you didn't raise your hand. You didn't raise your hand. Amakai, how you feel? You didn't raise your hand. Ashar, you didn't raise your hand when I asked if you didn't know what this was talking about. Obadiah. Okay. So, I need you to prove this with scriptures, what you're talking about. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. That's the first one I want you to explain. Uh, Hebrews. There you go. Let's say uh, 9. Hebrews 9 and what? Uh, Go to Hebrews chapter 9. I'm thinking one. one. You can start at one. Ten. Good job. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on for a second. Start at Hebrews 9 and 1 first. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1. Before we go there, I want to read this. 
It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Who blotted out the handwriting of ordinances? Christ. Christ. What was it that he blotted out? Murder? Was it adultery? What was it? Oh, sacrifice. Sacrifice. Right? No, blotting out the hand the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out the way, nailing it to the cross, what was nailed to the cross, the old covenant, which was sacrifices. Read Romans chapter 9. Verse 1. I want y'all to remember, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Romans, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1. Read. Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service. Had what? Had ordinance of divine service. What was the first covenant? Sacrifice. Now, let's see if this is going to talk about murder, or let's see if it's going to talk about fringes, or let's see if it's going to talk about the beard. It says the first, nearly the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Read. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick. Come on. And the table. Mm -hmm. And the showbread, mm -hmm. which is called the sanctuary. Read on. And after the second veil, read. The tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. What were they doing in this place? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Was it talking about fringes? Have we gotten to any fringes yet where we ain't supposed to do these things or uh, close this mixed mixed garments, all these laws that God gave us? Read. Verse 4, which had the golden censer. Come on. And which ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold. Where was the ark of the covenant? It was in the tabernacle. Come on. Where, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded mm -hmm. and the tables of the co of the covenant. And over it the uh cerebim, cerebims, cerubims, right of glory shadowing the mercy seat. Come on, of which we cannot speak particularly. Read on. Now when these things were thus ordained, that the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Doing what? Accomplish the service of God. What was the service of God? Sacrifice. Thank you. Read on. Verse 7. But until the second went in the highest priest alone. The high priest went by himself once a year. Once a year. Not without blood. Ooh, not without what? Not without blood. What did he need blood for? Was it for to, to color his fringes that was supposed to be done away with? What was the blood for? The sacrifice. Thank you. Read on. Which he offered for himself mm. and for the errors of the people. For the errors of who? Of the people. This was sacrificing for sins. This is talking about sacrifice. Read. The Holy Ghost is signifying that they that that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. It's saying, y'all don't realize Christ was prophesied to come before they even started the sacrifice. And y'all realize that? We'll get into that another time. But this was basically the Holy, Holy Spirit was uh, signifying that the true way or the true sacrifice was not yet come. Read. While at the first tabernacle was yet standing. Read. Verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present. Which was what? Which was a figure for the time then present. That tabernacle or that old covenant was a figure of the time then present. For that time frame right there. It was for that, that time. Read. In which were offered both gifts and sacrifice. Gifts and sacrifices were given with, with what? the For the uh, offerings, read. That could not make him that did the service perfect. Ooh, wait a minute. That could not make him that did the service perfect. As pertaining to the conscience. As pertaining to the conscience. Those that were sacrificing, what was what was not happening? The bar. The laws weren't saved. The laws weren't in them. It didn't make them perfect. Why? Because the laws, the statutes, Christ was not in them to bring them to that next level. They would just, they mess up, they'd sin, and then they just make a sacrifice. Similar to what so-called Christians do. They don't care about keeping the laws. If they mess up, they just, hey, here's, here's uh, please forgive me. Uh, and they were going about their business. Read. Verse 10. Come on. Which stood only in meats and drinks. Which stood in meats and drinks to sacrificing, read. And divers. Washing uh -huh. and carnal ordinances, and carnal ordinances imposed of them unto the time of reformation. Stop. Go back to Colossians chapter two. Now this is all going to come together for you. <clears throat> Colossians chapter two, verse fourteen. Come on. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us. What was the ordinances that was against us? The sacrificing it could not make the comers thereunto perfect. We need to be made perfect before the Lord. Why? 
We need that blood of Christ on us to bring us to that level. Why? Now Christ comes and dwells in us. Now we have a mind to serve him. He put the laws now in our hearts. That's why when we talk about the laws, it's like we are from another world here on earth. It's like we come from Mars. They're like, the laws, fringes, beard, whoa. You tell somebody you don't eat pork, they think you Muslim automatically. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, read. Which was contrary to us. Could not make us perfect, read. And took it out of the way. Took the old covenant out of the way and did what? Nailing it to the cross. Nailed it to the cross. Guess what? Now he died on the cross. He nailed it to the cross. Now we into the what? New covenant. Come on. And having spoiled principalities. How did he spoil principalities and powers? Read. He had made and show of them openly. Read. Triumphing over them in it. What did he triumph over? Nope. What did he triumph over? No. And having spoiled principalities and powers... He made a show of them openly. Who did he show up when he came? The uh, the Pharisees. Pharisees. Those that was against him and the other nations that put him on the cross. They thought, ah, boom, you're dead. Got you. You're finished. He said, nah. -uh. He made a show of them openly and showed himself. He was there. Y'all y'all understand how long Christ came? When he came back, how long he was here back on earth? 40 days. He wasn't just here for a couple of days or, or an hour or two. He should, everybody knew, oh, snap. This thing was spread abroad. Read on. Verse 16. Read. Let no man therefore judge Stop. you. Stop. Now he said, listen, let no man. Now Christ done made a spoil of the principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. He said, listen, don't let nobody come and spoil you. He says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Stop. Don't let nobody come and tell you now that you're wrong because you don't now sacrifice because you believe on the Messiah. Don't let nobody come and tell you that you're wrong, you Colossians. Were the Colossians, did they come up under the Levitical order? No. Just like in Galatia, what was happening? You had those Pharisees that were going out telling people, unless you be, you, you're circumcised after the manner of Moses, and you come back and start sacrificing, you won't be able to be saved. Well, guess what? The, he's telling the Colossians, listen, don't let nobody tell you that you got to sacrifice to get the kingdom. Let no man judge you in meat and in drink or in respect of an holy day. What happened on the holy days? You offered up offerings. Give me Leviticus 23. Let's prove that. Leviticus 23. I want verse 37. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 37. Come on. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Read. A burnt offering. A burnt offering. And a meat offering. Here we got meat offering. Let no money judge you in meat, which is a meat offering. A Read. sacrifice. A sacrificing, sacrificing. Read. And drink offering. What? This is let nobody therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Read. Everything upon it, his day. Everything upon his day. This is or in respect of an holy day. Y'all don't realize Paul is going back to the scriptures on these folks. Paul is going back and showing them, listen, yes, every day had its sacrifice, right? Don't let nobody tell you you wrong now for not sacrificing. Why? Because Christ has come. Christ is your sacrifice. You observe the day the way you, you were supposed to observe the day, through Christ. But you don't got to make an offering. You don't got to go to Jerusalem to make that offering. Read that again. Verse 37. These are the feast days of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offering an offering made by fire unto the Lord, mm -hmm. a burnt offering, burnt offering, a meat offering, a meat offering, a sacrifice. Sacrifice could have been a gift. They gave gift offerings as well. Read and drink offering and drink offering. We're reading the same thing here in Colossians chapter two, verse sixteen. Read everything upon His day. Everything upon His day. It says, "On respect of an holy day," meaning what? Every holy day had its different sacrifice that you made. He says, don't let nobody judge you and tell you you got a sacrifice. Read. Besides the no, Sabbath. No, no. Are you, or. Wait, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Colossians 2. That's where oh. I'm at. Oh. 16. Just read verse 16 again. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Come on. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Or in drink, or in respect of any holy day. All three of those is sacrifices, read. 
Or of the new moon. Sacrifice, read. Or of the seventh day. What did they do on the Sabbath days? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. How do you know? Nope. There's a scripture I need that Christ spoke about the Sabbath pertaining to what was going on on the Sabbath. The priest was found blameless. Y'all, matter of fact, y'all better get y'all's concordances out. Y'all gonna learn how to how to look these precepts up. What you talking about, bro? I'm looking for the scripture. First question, you want No. Christ speaking about the Sabbath day. Who has a concordance open right now? Who has their concordance? Oh, no. uh, so, Matthew 12 and 5. Read. Matthew chapter 12, verse 5. Listen to me. When y'all come to class, y'all need to come prepared. Concordances, your Bibles, and notes. Whenever you, there's just a time that you need to find it because y'all be looking crazy because y'all don't know how to use this concordance. <clears throat> Matthew's 12, start at verse 1. Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. At the time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and the disciples were in hunger, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did? So this is basically he's about to cut them dealing with the Sabbath. Showing them how to observe the Sabbath. Jump down to verse 5. Matthew chapter 12, verse 5. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? How are they profaning the Sabbath? How are the priests profaning the Sabbath on the Sabbath but are found blameless? They were sacrificing. They were sacrificing. They were what? They were working. They were doing the same thing that they do every day of the week. Which is what? The workings of the temple. Right? Go back. Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> verse uh, 16. Yeah. yeah. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. Now, now that we understand that this is all talking about sacrifice, right? Let's now go line upon line. Read. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, mm -hmm. which are a shadow of things to come. Ooh, wait a minute. Did, where did we read that earlier? We read this earlier. All of this sacrificing was just a shadow of something to come. We read this earlier. Let's see who's thinking. <laughs> Hebrews what? Listen, don't don't call nothing out. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it is not. Go to Hebrews the ninth chapter. Nine and nine. Hebrews chapter nine, verse nine. I want to read while he's reading. Now, I'm gonna read Colossians two and sixteen. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of an holy day. Or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. These, this sacrificing was a shadow of what the true sacrifice was to come, which was Christ. Read that in Hebrews nine. Hebrews chapter nine, verse nine. Come on. Which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices mm -hmm. that could not make him that did the service perfect. Read as pertaining to the conscience. Verse Come 10, on. which stood only in meats and drinks and divers, yeah. washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Until the time of what? Reformation. Until the time to come, the time of reformation, the time of the new covenant. This Bible is, is, is saying the same thing over and over. It's redundant. You can't change this into, you can't tell me I can't eat my pork. You can't tell me I can't eat my crab. Go back to Colossians 2. 
Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come. The sacrificing was a shadow of things to come. Read. But the body is of Christ. The body is of Christ. Imagine, let's just say. Let's just say that this was talking about unclean food, right? I want y'all to picture a big old pig, okay? Picture a big old pig. Read verse 17. It says, let no man judge you in meat or in drink or respect of a holy day or the Sabbath days, right? So they say, you can't tell me I can't eat what I want. Okay, let's picture a big old pig, read. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come. It's a shadow of things to come. What does it mean when it says it's a shadow of something to come? Meaning it's... it's there for a period of time and then it's going to change. Here's the light. Okay. Here's my shadow, right? Right. Okay. That sac... The, the, let me break it down how it really is. The sacrificing was just the shadow of that which was really to come. So what is that which really is really to come when you look at the shadow? Your hand. My hand, which the body is of Christ. The sacrificing was basically set forth in front of Christ until Christ came in and now made the ultimate sacrifice. This was just a time period until the time of reformation. Y'all understand? <clears throat> Y'all stop. You understand? Uh, yes, should be a parathon. Yes. Ashar. Amakai. Obadiah. Yeah. Okay. Colossians 2, verse 16 again. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink mm -hmm. or in respect of any holy day. Sacrificing, sacrificing, sacrificing. Or of the new moon. Sacrifices or in the new the, moon. Or of the Sabbath day. Or of the Sabbath days. All sacrifices. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. So-called Christians, you cannot use this scripture. Go ahead and, and scratch this off of your to, to eat pork list as well. All right. Acts the 10th chapter. <clears throat> you are an hour and a half in so far. Uh, Acts chapter 10. Start at verse 1. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. I'm trying to go through this as quick as possible because we have other scriptures just to touch on real briefly. But Acts yeah. chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. There was a certain man in Caesarea. Called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian Band. So here we have this man that was in, um, uh, what was it, Caesarea. He was called Cornelius, okay? This Acts the 10th chapter is what a lot of so-called Christians try to use and say, Hey, see, Peter seen this and he can do this. We're going to go through it real <clears throat> quick so everybody can understand that this has nothing to do with food, okay? I want you to jump down. To verse 9. Basically, from this point, an angel came to Cornelius and told Cornelius to look for this man uh, or send for this man, Peter, okay? Acts chapter 10, verse 9. Come on. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray with pray about the sixth hour. Verse 10. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Come on. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him. Okay. As it had been a great sheep knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Okay, real quick. You know, I'm going to come back and explain this. Uh, there's actually a whole class over Acts 10, but we don't have a lot of time. So imagine he's basically seeing the vision, and it was a tent, and basically it was knit on at the four corners of the earth, right? Read on. Verse 12. Wherein were all matter of four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Stop. He saw all animals under that, right? He saw all types of animals underneath that. Read on. And there came a voice to him Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. What is that? He said, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat, right? right. Okay. Was this before or after Christ ascended? Was Peter learning from Christ? You said no? What was Peter doing whenever he was with Christ, when he was here? He was learning. He was learning, right? Right. Why would Peter not have thought when they learned in Mark, the seventh chapter, that you can eat whatever you want 
Why is it that Christians come here and try to say, see, Peter didn't want to eat those foods because it was unlawful? Y'all understand what the analogy I'm trying to draw? Here we are in Acts the 10th chapter. They're trying, right now, you're going to see Peter, who was there with Christ in Mark 7, learning. We see Peter about to basically refuse to eat these different foods. Why would Peter do that if Mark the 7th chapter said that you can eat whatever you want? Let's read. Verse 14. But Peter said, not so, Lord. Peter said what? Not so, Lord. Whoa. Hold up. What in your right mind could make you tell the Lord no? You have to be highly confused. You think it's a trick. Here it is. You see all these different, these different beasts of the earth. Cows, pigs, shrimp, catfish. All these different things on the earth. And God says, listen, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, no, not so, Lord. You think you're being tested right then and there, right? Read. For I have never eaten. Hold on, keep the noise down. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now, wait a minute. How is it unclean if Christ said in Mark the seventh chapter, before this happened, that you can eat what you want to eat? He says, not so, Lord. I've never eaten of anything that's common or unclean. Read. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. Here comes the voice the second time saying what? What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. What God cleansed, don't you call common. Now watch this. This what, Hold on. Now imagine what's going through Peter's mind. Peter's confused right now. He says, what God has cleansed, don't call it common. When did God cleanse pork? Never. 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 So what is this actually talking about? We're going to cover it. Read on. Verse 16. This was done thrice. This was done thrice. Three times this happened. Read. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Did Peter go eat it? Did you read that? Maybe we missed it. Maybe we missed where Peter dove in and said, yes, Lord, give me that, that them chitlins, that hog maw, pig feet. Give me them sausages. That didn't happen. It says the vessel was caught up and, and went back up to the heavens, right? Read on. Verse 17. Now while Peter doubted in himself. How was he still doubting? The Lord told him three times he can eat whatever he wanted to eat, right? So-called Christians. What is he doubting? Read. What this vision which he had seen. He's trying to figure out what does this mean, what I just seen? Because I know the Lord ain't telling me go and eat these unclean foods. Come on. Should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry for Simon's house. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It says, read that again. Uh, verse 17. Now while Peter doubted in himself, <clears throat> what his vision which he had seen should mean. Mm -hmm. Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Now here comes these men from Simon's house. From I'm sorry, from, uh, from Cornelius, right? Go to ver read verse 7. Acts chapter 10 verse 7. And when the angel which, speak, which spake unto Cornelius was departed. Now here the angel departed. This is after the angel told him to send for Peter. He called two of his household servants. He called two household servants. And a devout soldier. And a devout soldier. That's three men he called for, right? Read. Mm -hmm. Of them that waited on him continually. Of them that waited for on him continually. Read. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. He sent them to Joppa, those three different men, right? How many times did he see this vision? Three times. Watch. Go to verse um, 17 again. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 17. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean. Read. Behold. The men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, <coughs> which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Read. While Peter thought on the vision. While he thought on the vision, what the vision meant, read. The Spirit said unto him. Come on. Behold, three men seek thee. No, the Spirit said, behold, you need to go finish that pork he was eating. What did, what did scripture say? <laughs> three men seek thee. He, the spirit said, three men are looking for you. He had the vision three times. I'm sorry, the Lord told him three times, don't call what I've called um, cleansed, call it common or unclean. Well, basically common, he didn't say unclean, but don't call it common. Read. 
Arise, therefore, and get thee down, mm. and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. For I have sent them. What was the dilemma that Peter was having? Why was it such a big deal? Why did the Spirit have to come to him and let him, and have him go with those three men? Y'all, what's up? Because at that time, they didn't fellowship, Jews didn't fellowship with Nations. Right. At that time, the Jews did not fellowship with those of other nations, those living like Greeks, those living like Egyptians. They didn't have no dealings with those scattered tribes. OK, they figured y'all was done. Y'all are Gentiles. Y'all are through. Why? Matter of fact, jump to verse 28. <clears throat> Acts chapter 10, verse 28. And he said unto them, ye know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company. He says, listen, you know that it's an unlawful thing for a man, which is a Jew, to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Mm, or to come on unto one of another nation. He's like, I'm not supposed to be messing with y'all. Read. But God had showed Who me. Who showed him? God had showed me. When did he show it to him? In the vision. It wasn't talking about food. Read. That I should not call any man common or unclean. Good night. This is what he said. Go read a read verse 15. Verse 15. Come on. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. Read. What God hath cleansed, and that call not thou common. He says, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. They considered the northern tribes, the northern kingdom, to be unclean. They said, Y'all are heathens, y'all Gentiles, y'all are done. That within itself is a uh, another class which we don't have time to go through. But go to Hosea and read in Hosea whenever they spoke about the northern kingdom, Ephraim. How they basically, God wasn't dealing with that. Point is, if you can read, this ain't talking about foods. Your ministers, your pastors, your bishops, whomever, have lied. They have told what? They said you can eat what you want. Look, Peter was shown the vision and now you can do what you want to do. They're liars. Liars. From that. Here's another one. This is going to be the one that they use that some people have trouble explaining. Go to Romans 14. All right, we got all this to get to this one. This one confuses a lot of people. Romans 14. Who wrote Romans? Who wrote Ephesians? Who wrote Colossians? Who wrote um, Corinthians? Okay, earlier, where do we read about idolatry, the food sacrificed to idols? Uh, where did we read it? Timothy, verse 4. Who wrote Timothy? Uh, where else did we read about food sacrificed unto idols? Uh, Starts with a C. Uh, Corinthians. Okay, who wrote Corinthians? Uh, okay. Okay. Notice, Paul says a lot of the same things. He's repeat. He's basically saying what he told his other church over here. They're having similar problems. Corinthians, Colossians, Timothy and them. Watch this. Romans 14, start at verse 1. 14 and verse 1. <clears throat> Romans chapter 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputes. Disputation. Read that again. <clears throat> Him that is weak in the faith receiving, but not to doubtful disputation. That man that is that you receive that's weak, don't receive him. You got to basically build him up like Paul was talking about earlier. Okay? You got to be that strong person for him. It says, but not to doubtful disputations, meaning what? Concerning the things that he believes in. Don't even play with that stuff. Edify him, be there and guide him and show him, thus saith the Lord. Read for one believeth that he may eat all things. Now, one man believes that he can eat all things. What is this talking about? Uh, first Timothy 4, 4, 4. Which is what? What is it talking about? Thanksgiving, uh, no, no animal, uh, no creature of God. Wrong. No, no, we just we just covered it in Corinthians. For listen up, for one believer that he may eat all things. 
Hold on. What'd you say? Which is what? Uh, food sacrificed on the idol. Thank you. Y'all need listen. Y'all gotta stay with it. There's a reason why we pulled that in Corinthians. I asked y'all about the food sacrifice unto idols. One believe it that he may eat all things. What does this man believe? Yeah, even if it's sacrificed in the idols. That he can eat it, okay? Read on. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Why is this man who's weak eating herbs? Meat, because you sacrifice. Exactly. This man is weak in he's weak in faith, meaning he doesn't understand that those gods are nothing. Yeah. Those guys don't mean anything. He may have been one of the that came out of the Greek uh customs and he may say, No, nah, I'm not touching that stuff. I know what it is, I know those gods, whatever. It says Another who is weak eateth herbs. He said, screw this. I'm not eating any of that. But that man, that, that one man that believed, he, he eats all things. He's like, listen, I don't care what they do. They what they sacrifice to. Read on. Verse 3. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. That man that, that believes and understands that he can eat all things, don't despise that man that's only eating the herbs. Don't do that. Why is he doing it? For conscience sake. Remember how Paul told him in Corinthians? Read. And let not him which eateth not judge him in that judge him that eateth. And that man that's just, that's eating, that's not eating, but don't let him judge him that's eating those things. Why? Because he needs to understand that those gods are nothing. Don't be against each other. You say you can't eat it, you feel that it's wrong, fine. But don't judge that brother. Don't look at that brother now that he's wrong and say he's off because what? He's eating those things that were sacrificed unto idols. Read on. But God has received him. Mm, God has received him. Why? Because he's in the truth. He's right. He can eat what he wants. Come on. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? Come on. To his own master he standeth or falleth. Mm. Yea, he shall be holding up. For God is able to make him stand. God is the one who is able to judge. God is the one that's able to bring him up. God is going to be the one that's going to show him that he's justified. Right? Read on. One man... Esteemeth one day above another. So here we go with another one. One man, he esteems a day, he esteemeth one day above another. What is he talking about, Amakai? Sure. What is he talking about, Yeshua Paradigm? Sacrifice. Right. One man esteemeth one day above another. One man, he says, listen, today I got to do this sacrifice, that sacrifice, this sacrifice. Now, is this man, does this man believe in Christ? Exactly. Why? What did this man grow up as? The bar. He, he grew up under the Levitical sacrifice. Exactly. He grew up sacrificing. The temple's still there. That's the law. It says one man esteemed one day above another. Read. Another esteemed every day alike. At one he every day is alike. He's like, no, I'm not I'm not sacrificing. Yeah, it's the new moon, but I'm not sacrificing. Read. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Every man has to be fully persuaded in his own mind. Whenever that brother is ready to step away from that sacrifice, and whatever the case is, and he says, I'm done with that, fine. We read about Paul sacrificing. Y'all remember when Paul sacrificed? Go to Acts 21. Because some Christians are, are, are basically ignorant to this, that what, what Paul had did. Acts 21, I'm going to read. I'm going to start at verse... 18. It says, In the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what God, what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they all are, and they are zealous, I'm sorry, and they are all zealous of the law. And if they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after their cousins. Why do they think this about Paul? Because of the way he teaches. Exactly. Paul's writings is hard to be understood. You read about that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 on down. His writings were difficult to be understood. They didn't understand what Paul was saying. They didn't get it. Like Christianity don't get it today. It says, verse uh, 22. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. 
Do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. Take them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads that all may know that, th that those things where they were informed concerning thee are nothing but thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. What, did he, what was it that he was about to undertake in? That he undertook in? That he did? Ashar? Gabar. Right. The vow of Nazareth. The vow of the Nazareth. Okay? You, where is that located at, Paulo? Ashar? Gabar? Number six. Numbers, the sixth chapter. Verse 25. It says, As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing. What is it that they observe no such thing? To take the vow of the Nazarite. That they don't do that. Why is that? Because they, they weren't raised that way. Thank you. They did not come up sacrificing. It says the Gentiles, listen, they don't need to take the, uh, the law of the Nazarite. They don't need to take the, um, the vow of the Nazarite. It says, um, save only that they keep themselves from things offered unto idols. Meaning what? They need to stay away from them. idols and from blood. Eating things with blood in it. Where do we read about eating things with blood in it? The bar. Ain't nobody, hold on. Does nobody else know? Leviticus what? Uh, uh, 20, 20, 27. Leviticus what? 21. No. 19. 19 and what? Thank you. Leviticus 19.26. You shall not eat anything with that with the blood. It says back in uh, Acts 21, it says, and from blood and from strangled and from fornication. These things is what they were prevalent in as, as Greeks. These are the things they were suffering from. It says, then Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself with them entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. What did Paul do? Paul went and made the sacrifice. Was he wrong? No, the temple was still there. But Paul understood that what? He didn't have to sacrifice. He wasn't going to be held, uh, basically, he wasn't going to be, he wasn't going to not make it to the kingdom of heaven because he wouldn't sacrifice. He believed on Christ. The temple was still there. The law is still in effect. But you see that James, the elders, Peter and them, they were still sacrificing. Okay, so go back. Romans 14. <clears throat> Romans chapter 14. Verse 3. Four. No. Verse 2. We was in verse... Um, yeah, it was in verse 5. Sir, verse 5. Verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord. For he giveth good thanks, and that eateth not. To the Lord he eateth not, and giveth good thanks. God thanks. Mm -hmm. for, wh on. for whither... Oh, oh verse 7. So back to what I was saying in verse 6. What is that talking about? It says, he that eateth and eateth to the Lord, for he giveth thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth thanks. What is that talking about? Which is? Exactly. That neither one of them are wrong. Now that brother that don't eat, yeah, he's weak. He is weak because he has to come to understanding that those idols are nothing. But it may be something that's on his conscience. Something that may be a stumbling block. From there. Matter of fact, jump on down. Because I want to use this verse with eight. Even though we know the context. Let's go further down to verse um, 13. Romans chapter 14 verse 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Listen, let, not, let us not there, uh, therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or occasion to fall in his brother's way. Remember how I was talking about that man that, has a, that, has a, that doesn't eat? Don't let him judge the man that's eating. Don't put a stumbling block in front of him. Oh, you wrong, you wicked, you going off. Don't do that. Read on. I know. And I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus. This is Paul saying, he says, I know and I'm persuaded. Remember earlier he says all things are lawful? 
but it's not expedient. Remember that thing? What he said? Did he, did he mean all things are lawful unto him to where he could do what he want? What was he talking about? I Meaning he can eat those foods that were sacrificed to other idols. It's not. A, it's nothing. Read. That there is nothing unclean of itself. So listen, there's nothing that's unclean of itself. He knows I can, I can eat that. Just because he does what he does and it, it, he says it's wrong, I know I can eat it, Paul is saying. Just because he sacrifices to an idol, I know it's okay for me to eat, read. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. That man that esteems that meat to be now unclean because it was sacrificed unto that idol, okay, fine. To him it's unclean. It's no big deal if you don't want to touch it. Whatever. Read on. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat. If thy brother be grieved with thy meat, read. Now walkest thou not charitably. Now walkest thou not charitably. Meaning what? You purposely try. You basically um, antagonizing the man, and so and so to speak. You know he's offended by that. Read. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. For whom Christ died. Because why? That brother may be weak. Okay? That brother may be weak, and now that meat may draw him back into whatever it was that he was doing. Or that, that meat may offend him to the point to where you don't know where he'll go at this point. Okay, um, from there, give me 1 Corinthians chapter 8. So just reiterate uh, uh, Romans 14. Okay. 1 Corinthians 8 chapter, start at verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Come on. Now it's touching things often unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffed up, but charity, but charity edified. Now, and now it's concerning things often unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Remember Paul said, I know that I can eat what I want? He says, but guess what? It says, knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Knowledge puffs up. Like, yeah, I know I can do You ain't going to tell me nothing. I know I can do this. But being charitable, that's going to help teach somebody, right? Concerning what? Eating things in front of other people, like he said, to edify your brother, right? Read on. But if any man think that he knoweth in anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Yeah, if any man think he know anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Meaning what the Most High gave that man to know, all he knows is what the Lord gave him. Okay, read on. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols. Mm. We know that an idol is nothing in the world. The idol's nothing, read. And that there is none other God but one. And there's only one true God. Come on. For, for though there be that are called. Oh, for though there be that are called gods, read. It says, whether in heaven or in earth. As there be God's many and Lord's many. He says there's a bunch of gods out here. There's a bunch of gods who claim to be gods and things of that nature. But guess what? There's only one true God. Come on. Verse 6. But to us there is but one God. There's only one. Read. The Father of whom are all things and we in him. Read on. And one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him. Come on. How be it there is not in every man that knowledge. How does everybody don't know this? Come on. For some with conscience of the idol until his hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol. For some with conscience of the idol, this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol. Read. And their conscience being weak is defiled. That's the problem. That's what Paul's trying to prevent. That person in their conscience, they eat it as an offering made unto that idol. Now that's what's, not, what's making them defiled. Close that blind, sis. Close that blind. Read that again. Verse 7. Zariah. How be Close it? Close blind. Verse Read. 7. How be it? There is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol until his hour eaten as a thing offered unto an idol. And their conscience being weak is defiled. And their conscience being weak now is defiled. Why? Because they're eating it as that idol, as that food sacrificing to that idol. They got simple. Read on. But meat commended us not to God. Read. For neither, if we eat, are we are we the better? Right. Neither, if we are if we eat not, 
Are we the worst? That meat ain't bringing us closer to God by us saying, yeah, I know I can eat this meat. I'm straight. Or us saying, no, I'm not going to eat that meat because it will sacrifice unto this other God. That ain't, that ain't bringing you close. What's bringing you close to the most high? The keeping of his commandments. The uh, righteousness that he spoke of in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, and the 25th verse. Believing on his son as he commanded. Remember in John chapter 17, he says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. That's how we get closer to the most high. Read on. Verse 9. But take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become, I mean, become a stumbling block to them that are weak. He said, listen, take heed. Your liberty to where you're able to eat, you can eat whatever it is that you want to eat pertaining to the things that are lawful. But these eating things that were sacrificed into idols because it was everywhere. Just like now we have, see how we have trouble trying to find um, foods that are clean? Back then, they think about the trouble they had to go through to find foods that weren't sacrificed unto idols. <laughs> it says, but take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become not a stumbling block. Make sure that your liberty that you have to where you can eat whatever you want don't become a stumbling block unto somebody who's weak, who may get simple when they eat those meat sacrificed unto other gods. <clears throat> Read on. Verse 10. For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple. If anybody see you. Now, here somebody has uh, knowledge, right? And they like, dang, this is what's going on. And they see you eating, Read. Shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered unto I mean, to idols. Now, if they see you eating, let's say you're at a place and this is the market. And here it is. They selling daggone um, uh, Buddhist meat, beef, whatever the case is. Somebody see you in there eating. And this brother now is like, oh, snap. Look at this dude. He's, he's eating food sacrifice unto idols. That's that stumbling block he's talking about. Okay. It says, but take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? So that simple man's going to say, well, I guess it's okay. I'm going to eat it. And on his mind, what is he doing? He's glorifying that Buddhist God, whatever the case is. Read on. And through thy knowledge shall, thy, shall the weak brother perish for mm. whom Christ died. And Christ died for that Israelite who now is going to perish because what? He's yes. going right back into that, going sacrificing on the idols. Read on. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, mm. ye sin against Christ. You sin against Christ. Come on. Verse 13. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, mm. lest I make my brother to offend. He says, listen, if, it, if by me eating um, this uh, the food sacrifice to idols is going to hurt somebody, I don't need to eat any flesh while I'm here. He'll eat herbs in front of everybody. Now, let's just say, this is talking about clean and unclean foods, right? Are Christians doing this? Are Christians abstaining from pork? Are Christians abstaining from unclean foods? No, they run to it willingly with all with a wide open arms and a mouth wide open. All right, from there, one last scripture. Give me Second Maccabees, chapter six. Just to show you our, our people. Second Maccabees, chapter sixteen. This is the standpoint we're supposed to have. I don't know. Well, I do know what's happening. Sin is happening. Satan is taking over. Second Maccabees chapter 6. I want verse 18. <clears throat> 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 18. Here, I'm going to read it. Right. Second Maccabees, the 6th chapter and 18th verse. Eleazar, one of the, pr the principal scribes, an aged man, and of a well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. They were trying to force him to eat swine. This man, Eleazar, was an Israelite, right? He was a, uh, a principal scribe. Verse 19. But he, choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment. He says, listen, y'all going to try to make me? Listen, he spit, he spit it out of his mouth. Y'all ain't going to make me eat this. And he came to his own torment. Y'all going to have to kill me. This was an aged man. Do our aged men do this today? No. No, that brother last night said, ham? Bacon? 
sausages? <laughs> no, no, brother. Yeah, mm -mm, I can't. I'm, I'm gonna eat that. Y'all ain't y'all ain't stopping that. <laughs> it says verse nineteen. But he, choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment, as it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things as are not lawful for to, uh, for love of life to be tasted. But they that had the charge of the wicked feast, for the old acquaintance they had with the man, taking him aside, besought to bring him to bring, I'm sorry, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision. What they were going to do was they was basically going to say, all right, you come here, since we got a relationship with you. Listen, we're going to let you bring your own meat, right? You can eat your own meat, and it's going to basically look like you're eating pork. It says, such as was lawful for him to use, and make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king, that in so doing he might be delivered from death. And for the old friendship with uh, with them, find favor. So basically, he would have basically found favor with them and not died that day. They like help us out, we'll help you out. That's what these wicked uh, Edomites was doing. It says, uh, verse twenty three. But he began to consider discreetly, and he became and as became his age, the and the excellency of his ancient years, and the honor of his gray head, whereunto he was come, and his. And his most honest education from a child, or rather the holy law, made a given, made and given by God. Therefore, he answered accordingly and willed them straight ways to send him to the grave. He said, listen, kill me. I ain't doing it. Put me to death. He said everything that he's learned since from a boy as he's grown up, his name, he ain't never done that. He has a, he has a reputation. He don't want to be known as that in his old age. He fell off. Verse um, 24, for it becometh not our age, said he, in any wise to disassemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being fourscore years old and ten, what is fourscore years old and ten? Fourscore years old and ten. What's, what's fourscore? Oh, I'm sorry, 90. Man was old. Three score is what? 60. Four score is what? 80. Plus 10? 90. Here we go. Uh, where did I, I lost my spot? 24. For become of not our age, said he in any wise to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being fourscore years old and ten, were now gone to a strange religion. And so they, through mine hypocrisy uh, and desire to live a little time and a moment longer, should be deceived by me. And I get a stain to my old age and make it abominable? For though... For for that, for though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. Wherefore now, manfully changing his life, I will show myself such a one as mine age requireth, and leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. They that led him changing the goodwill, they bear him a little before into, into hatred, because the foresaid speeches proceeded as they thought from a dis desperate mind. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, It is, it is manifest unto the Lord that that hath the holy knowledge, that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains in body by being beaten. But in soul am well content to suffer these things because I fear him. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a notable courage and a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. Israel don't remember this man. Israel has no clue that this man even existed. Why? Because we had our heritage stripped. We had our history taken away from us. We willingly run to pork. Our people love pork like it's just like, like, this is God. The pig got to be God to some people. When, when our forefathers back in the day would die for it. Right. They would die before they eat pork. They died. They was put to death. You read in the seventh chapter, a whole family died. Yeah. Whole family was, was killed. And their mother. These men were putting a, in a frying pan and fried. Mm -hmm. This is what these Greeks was doing to us. Why? Why were they forcing us to eat pork? 
Why do you think they forcing it on us now? What did we? What were we forced to eat when we came over here? That's all we had. Y'all don't see it's the same thing. It's these same nations, these same spirits that have come back and they're doing the same exact thing. Only difference is now Israel is asleep, checked out, and ignorant of God's commandments. Any questions? Uh, what was that scripture that said that uh, by us, the one was saying by them uh, having a sin against each other, or having a sin, they'd be able to oppress us? Uh, oh, I had to find it. There's a few of them. Basically, other nations knew that whenever we was in the midst of sin, they could conquer us. They could yes, take us. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the scripture. We'd have to find it. All right. If there's no questions with that, we'll say shalom.